currently we have approval of pembrolizumab for MSI high disease. Checkmate 8HW is looking to answer if dual checkpoint inhibition is better than single agent immunotherapy. Alok, your thoughts on the study design and its findings? Checkmate addressed the question of, okay, we know a bunch of patients, and when I say bunch, it's, it still is a very small minority, are MSI high. And we were so happy when some of the immune checkpoint inhibitors got approved for, for this first-line setting, get that result back as quickly as possible, get the MSI testing as quickly as possible. MSI high, in the past, we were doing single-agent immunotherapy, and you could sort of pick your favorite inhibitor, and it kind of works in the setting. And for me personally, in my practice, it was such a change from chemo to MSI high, and you were seeing durable responses, you were seeing a high rate of response. And we're GI oncologists, you know, we are uh, easily satisfied because uh, you know, it's hard to come across these great response rates in the GI cancer population. So I would say most of us were pretty satisfied with the standard of care. What Checkmate does is sort of levels up and says, hey, you know, we know one ICI inhibitor is great in the setting. Should we do two? And we know in other settings, you know, a dual immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy is better outside of the GI cancer setting. I personally have been hesitant to use uh, doublets because of the known increased toxicity associated with uh, doublet immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy and a relatively high response rate and a relatively high duration of response and overall survival. I was reluctant to go down this route. Uh, but that's why we have studies, because studies give you a great sense of what is the actual benefit to patients. So this was patients, first-line treatment, MSI high or deficient MMR, good performance status, randomized to NEVO, IPI-NEVO, or chemo. The primary endpoints were PFS, which if you're you know, a purist, you're going to challenge that because uh, overall survival should be the gold standard in many of these studies. Like this, we won't quite know whether this answers the question. But if you look at the primary endpoint, which was PFS, you see pretty impressive improvement not reached for the doublet arm. For NEVA alone, it was 40 months, which is outstanding. And you see this very early separation of the curves at month three, which is when the first CT scan is done. So right there at that first post-treatment scan, you're starting to see a bunch of patients do better in, in the doublet regimen. I'm not sure I would have expected this. If I was a betting person, I would say you'd have seen some benefit, but not that much, and it would be offset by the toxicity. But this Kaplan marker kind of makes me a believer. I hate to inflict more toxicity on patients, particularly with a heavy burden of disease and that are going to be on treatment for a long period of time. But, you know, here's the data not reached median survival versus, you know, close to 40 months. This is just really astounding data. Very happy for the patient population that we have improved uh, PFS, and hopefully this will lead to improvement in OS as well. Uh, but also definitely practice changing along with the BRAF mutant data. Thanks, Edmunds, for going over that, Alok. And with regards to the side effect profile, it does add on with the doublet therapy as opposed to the single agent, though we are lucky in community that we've utilized this therapy in melanomas, also in kidney cancers and for lung cancers as well. But at the end of the day, toxicity ties in with quality of life, so one has to have this patient-shared decision-making part of it. We are also eagerly awaiting how Comet study turns out, because that's a TESO versus a TESO plus chemo. So the question is, if we are to throw immunotherapy with chemotherapy, how does that really change as anything? With regards to this, if a patient has positive BRAF and MSI high, what will be your treatment sequence in that scenario? Yeah, that's a great question. Not answered by either of these studies because they were excluded from both those trials. Doesn't happen that often. I think I would lean more towards the doublet immunotherapy in that setting, but you could argue both sides of that. Right. I acknowledge this is a very different disease, but you brought up and Aloku touched on disease outside GI as well. In the community, we've seen this. BRAF, uh, V600E, particularly in melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer. And these patients do have good response to immunotherapy. So my go-to is also going to be immunotherapy and then coming back to anti-EGFR with BRAF inhibitors. Yeah, 